Hello, and welcome to Astronomy 101, Planetary Astronomy Lab at the Community College of Aurora. I'm Dr. David Atley, and I'll be your instructor for this semester. You can call me Professor Atley, Professor David, Dr. Atley, Dr. David, basically any of those things is fine. Whatever you're comfortable with, I will respond to. In this video, I'll be summarizing what you can expect throughout the semester as far as how the course is going to be formatted and how you're going to be ultimately graded based on your performance in class. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, before we get into the course specific content, I do have a few words that I want to say about COVID-19. Um, and please pay careful attention as circumstances have changed since last semester. Um, due to the ballooning of the Omicron variant. CCA is changing how we're going to be organizing our COVID response this semester. Um, first, masks continue to be required in all public indoor spaces, regardless of vaccination status. So if you're vaxxed, you're unvaxxed, you're boosted, doesn't matter, you need to be wearing a mask indoors at on CCA property. And you need to make sure that you're wearing your mask correctly. Because the Omicron variant is so much more contagious than the Delta variant, it's important to make sure that we're all doing our absolute best to prevent the spread of coronavirus within the CCA community. First, unlike previous semesters, cloth masks are now out. So the college is requiring that everyone wear either a disposable surgical mask or even better, a KN95 mask. It's also important to make sure that your mask is covering both your nose and your mouth, and that you have the best possible seal around your face. At this point, I'd hope that we all know how to put on a mask properly, but let's just review some basics really quickly. I'm going to take my mask, I'm going to apply it to my face using the ear loops. I'm going to stretch out the mask to cover my entire face from my nose to my chin. And you'll notice that when I put it on, I squeezed this metal nose piece so that the mask is fitting tightly across the top of my face. This gives a good seal and limits the amount of puffery that happens around the outside of my mask instead of having my in-breath and out-breath go through the mask itself. Doing this also makes it less likely that my, mouth, that my mask is going to slip off of my nose as I'm talking. Um, so it makes it easier to keep my face properly covered, and it means that I won't have to touch my mask as much or fidget with it to keep it in place. As you're wearing your mask, try to avoid touching the outside of your mask. And then once you're ready to take your mask off, remove it using the ear loops and dispose of it using a proper trash container. In addition, we also have a vaccination and testing re regime that's new this term. So you either need to present proof of vaccination, um, so that means two doses from either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine or a single dose from the J&J, &J, or submit weekly test results. Um, so the weekly testing is gonna be kind of a pain so I encourage you, if at all possible, to get yourself vaccinated if you haven't already. Due to the changing nature of the outbreak, I encourage you to have a look at CCA's website um, to see the most recent coronavirus mitigation policies. I've placed a link to the uh, CCA coronavirus page across the bottom of this slide and the slides that I'm using to talk here are available to you in the course of D2L shell. Um, so you can always uh, dig in and find these slides and use that link, or you can go to ccaurora.edu slash coronavirus. Okay, so that's it for COVID stuff. Let's talk now about what the actual course is going to be like. This is a general education science course for non-science majors, so we're going to be focusing on broad outcomes more than on retaining specific course information. So if you finish the class and then 
couple months later, you don't necessarily remember the difference between a terrestrial and a Jovian planet, I'll be disappointed by that. Um, but the most important stuff, the stuff that I really hope you retain, is going to be critical thinking, analytic reasoning, so how you take math and use it to draw conclusions based on ideas that you know about, as well as the scientific process, so how scientists go about generating new knowledge, and its application out in the real world. So the goal of this course is not to make you scientists, it's to make you better citizens, so that when you go out and you read, say, an article in the New York Times or the Washington Post or hear something on CNN, you bring the appropriate critical thinking skills to evaluate scientific claims that you might come across in your everyday life. We'll be teaching those skills through looking at certain topics related to planetary astronomy. So we'll start out the semester by looking at the night sky, how the sky changes over a day, a month, a year, and we'll use that to then jump into some history of astronomy, so how we went from looking up at the stars as, say, Paleolithic people and using the stars to kind of judge time of year, and then going from those ancient origins to our modern understanding of the structure of the solar system and the universe. Along the way, I'll introduce you to some basic physics that are necessary to understand planetary orbits, and then we'll dig into planets and planetary systems in a systematic way. So that's going to be kind of the second half of the course, is we'll talk about the solar system, how the solar system formed, the individual planets within our solar system, look for patterns as well as unique features, and we'll finish with a sort of fun one-off topic, which is to talk about life beyond our solar system. So that's the broad outline for how the course is going to proceed this semester. So having given you a general introduction for what you should expect in terms of material, let's now talk about how the course is going to actually proceed. So how is the day-to-day -day function of the class going to work? First, let me say that because of coronavirus, we'll be doing the first week of term this semester remotely. So all of this stuff that I'm about to say is going to apply to the vast majority of the semester, but I am going to be tweaking a little bit of how these things apply during that first week. So that's just something to keep in mind. Everything that I'm about to say to you regarding course policies and procedures is described in detail in the written syllabus, which is available through the course D2L shell. Uh, depending on when you're watching this, you may or may not have access to that syllabus quite yet. Um, but once the first day of term starts, you'll be able to see the written out version of all of these policies. And that's the official agreement between me and you about how the course will proceed and how you'll get evaluated at the end of term. In the course syllabus, uh, there's a detailed schedule for the semester. Um, you can see a little snapshot of it on your screen. And there's a bunch of color coding. Uh, the color coding marks different key parts of the course. i am also produced a printer-friendly printer version of this, which is in grayscale. Um, so those colors, instead of being bright colors, are different uh, shades of gray. Um, and that's going to be more easily, um, or that's going to be better read if you print it out and want to keep a paper copy with you. Um, so if you do want to carry around the course syllabus, print out the printer-friendly version. That will just look better. Okay, so everybody always wants to know, how am I going to get graded? How is my course grade going to be evaluated? Um, so there will be a combination of different factors that are going to contribute to your overall course grade. I've summarized the weighting for each of those factors here, and then we'll go through those one by one in detail over the next few minutes. Um, because this is a lab class, um, attendance is really important. That's by far the best way to keep up with the labs, but also to learn the material so that you have a chance to interact with me, ask questions, hear questions from your classmates. Um, so attendance is a part of your course grade. There is 
actual work that you have to do. Of course, it's not just showing up to class. Um, so every day there's going to be, except the first day. So uh, first day of class, there's no quiz. Um, but starting on the second day, uh, there will be an in-class quiz. Um, and your overall quiz average, so the average of all of those daily quizzes plus your module quizzes, more on that later, will equal 25% of your course grade as will the average of your lab assignments. Uh, your homework assignments are worth slightly less, but still pretty important, um, 20%. And then there are going to be two long-term projects that you'll complete over the semester. The first is the Lunar Science Project that will start in Module 1, and which will be due about a month to a month and a half into the term. And then the second one is the Space Mission Project, which is going to be uh, which will finish at the end of term and which will culminate with you, yes, you, giving a presentation in class. So again, more on both of those projects later. Your textbook for this term is an open education resource book that's distributed by a textbook organization called OpenStax, run by the University of Rice in Texas. That means that your textbook is free. It's called Astronomy by Fracknoy, Morrison, and Wolf, and it's available uh, in a variety of formats. You can get a print copy from the um, bookstore if you really want to. I don't recommend that necessarily. It's a big, heavy book um, that you don't necessarily need to be carting around because I'll provide all of the material you need in class. And it is available for free. Um, in a couple of different ways. You can go to the publisher's website, openstacks.org, where you can read the textbook in your browser. I've also embedded the textbook into its own module within the course D2L shell. Um, and in that module, you will also be able to make annotations, so highlight or make notes to yourself in the book itself. Um, you can also do that on the OpenStax website. So there are a number of good ways that you can read the textbook for free. Um, you can even get an ebook that you can then add to your Kindle or to your phone or whatever, so you can read it um, on the go if you like to do things that way. Let's now jump into expectations and how the course is going to actually be run. Um, I said before that attendance is important, um, so you are each entitled to a couple of excused absences because attendance is important, but I know stuff always comes up. You get sick, family member gets sick, you have to go to the doctor, and you're all entitled to two excused absences with minimal fuss. All you have to do is say, hey, Professor Atley, I'm going to be out on this day, and I will excuse you from that class, and then that's fine. If you have a medical emergency, like you get into a car accident and you have to go to the hospital, please don't send me an email. Go to the hospital. If you have a medical emergency, chances are you're going to have some sort of paperwork that comes out of that. Just bring it to me uh, the next time you're in class and show it to me and I'll excuse you for, that, for the relevant dates and that's fine. So I'm not going to be too picky about, especially about emergency type situations, um, but do your best to give me some sort of documentation so that I'm going to trust you and you're going to help me to trust you and it's just kind of a mutual relationship. I will excuse more than two absences um, subject to some discretion. I try not to be too strict about that, but don't abuse the privilege. Uh, that's kind of my best advice. As long as you're making a reasonable effort to regularly come to class and then to talk to me if you have an issue, it should be okay. So the one thing that I absolutely don't want you to do is just not show up and not say anything, because if that's the case, then you'll just be absent and you'll get a zero for the day. If you have an excused absence on a lab day, we'll have to make up that lab outside of class time. Um, so do please make arrangements with me to make up those labs in a timely fashion, because the lab schedule is synced with the course material, so you'll get more out of the labs if you're doing it around the right time in the course, connected to the material that's represented in the lab. In addition to just coming to class, it's also going to be very beneficial for you to prepare ahead of time. 
So read the assigned material before you come to class that day. That means that you'll be ready to take the reading quiz for the day, um, which is drawn partially from the reading, but also give you a chance to identify places where you're not entirely certain what's going on, to prepare questions that you want to ask me about. Also review your notes and any material that I've given back to you, like say graded quizzes, to see where you went wrong. And if you think that I still don't quite get this, that's another good opportunity to ask me a question. So the more that you're able to prepare for class ahead of time, the more likely it is that you'll succeed in the course. The daily quizzes are an important part of your grade. Um, they're going to make up about 65% of your overall quiz average. Um, the module quizzes will make up the other 35%, and I'll say more on those in just a minute. Your daily quizzes are generally pretty short. Um, they're not designed to be excessively challenging. It's just an opportunity to review the material that you learned during the previous class and to demonstrate that you've successfully completed the reading. The lowest daily quiz score will be dropped. Um, so for if for some reason you just really struggle with a particular day because you couldn't do the reading or you missed the previous class and haven't had a chance to catch up yet, that's okay. Um, that quiz will get dropped. And then in addition to those daily quizzes, which are short, which will last for only about 10 minutes, you also have your module quizzes that are administered through D2L on major topics. Um, there are going to be four of those throughout the term corresponding to each of our four big modules. Um, those take the place of exams, but they're much less highly weighted than a typical, say, midterm exam usually is in another class. Um, so they're summary quizzes, but don't stress out about them too much. Um, they're an hour. Um, you have two chances to take each one, so if you aren't happy with how you did the first time, you can always go back and try again, though potentially with slightly different questions. In addition to your quizzes, we're also going to be doing regular lab exercises. Um, so there are eight labs in the course, which is going to average about one every other week. Uh, you'll notice that that's not super precise. Um, sometimes there will be one lab a week. There might even be one week where there are two labs. I can't remember off the top of my head, which also means that there will be a period of a few weeks here and there where we go a while without having a lab, and that's just due to how the labs sync up with the course material. Um, do please print the lab instructions from D2L and bring them with you to class on lab days. Um, I'll do my best to try and remind you of that, but also please be conscientious about keeping an eye on the schedule. And one of the best things that you can do for yourself going into lab is to read through the instructions ahead of time so you know what you're going to be doing, you have kind of a general idea of why, and that's going to give you a better chance to complete the lab and to really grasp what you're doing in the lab and therefore hopefully to succeed. If you miss a lab due to an unexcused absence, that lab will become a zero. Um, so that does not get made up. I will drop your lowest lab grade. So if you happen to have an unexcused absence, that first zero will get dropped. But that does mean that if you have another lab that you struggle with unexpectedly, that other lab that you struggled with will get incorporated into your grade. So do your best not to miss a lab without letting me know ahead of time. Finally, we have your homework assignments. Um, this is the last of the sort of regular repeating things that we'll be doing. You're going to have homework assignments that are going to be due uh, regularly. Um, so it should be every Monday, um, if I'm remembering correctly. So it's the same, same day of the week all the time. Um, you may collaborate when you do your homeworks, uh, but you all have to do your own homework. Um, so you can't just say, oh, five of us worked on this together, so we're going to turn it in once. Um, your homeworks are due through D2L, and I expect all of you to complete the individual assignments. Um, those do show up in the quiz area on D2L. Um, so if you go into the course D2L shell, you'll see quizzes. 
and then you'll see like homework one, homework two, etc. So they're not quizzes, they don't go into your quiz grade, those are your homework. Uh, so I'm sorry about where that shows up in D2L, that's just what I have to do given how the D2L format works. Like your labs and your quizzes, your lowest homework score will also be dropped. So again, if you accidentally miss a homework assignment and you don't get around to it before the end of the late work, uh, late work period, that becomes a zero, and then the first zero will get dropped. Try not to do that. The homeworks, again, are designed to give you some feedback so you know if you're missing certain ideas, uh, to give me feedback so I see how you're doing, and therefore, the more you can keep up with the homeworks, the better it's going to be for both of us. In addition to those regular recurring types of assignments, we do have two major projects that I alluded to earlier. The first is the Lunar Sciences project, which has two parts. Uh, the first part is you're going to be tracking the phases of the moon over the course of a month. You'll need to make a total of 10 successful observations over about a 30-day period. So make sure that you plan ahead, because there will be cloudy nights and if you have a cloudy night, you can't see the moon. I know that seems obvious, but it's worth mentioning. Um, so chances are, if you leave this to the last 10 days of the month, you're not going to get all 10 observations, and so you will lose credit on that part. The second part is a paper. Um, so you're going to complete a research paper on the history and current state of knowledge of lunar science. Uh, that paper has three parts. Um, you'll be talking about the hypotheses regarding the formation of the moon, the Apollo project, and the three most recent missions to Earth's moon. Uh, there are many additional details regarding what I'm looking for in the project description, which is available on D2L. Um, so if you go to the uh, module one, you'll find a lunar science project submodule, which contains all of what you need in order to complete the Lunar Science Project. Um, just one word regarding the format of your paper. Again, lots of details on D2L. I am expecting footnotes. Um, so I want you to be giving me footnotes, providing sourcing information for your key facts. And that means that you'll need to be keeping careful notes as you prepare to write your paper. I do have one piece of advice for you as you're doing your research. To avoid the temptation of plagiarism, which is, say, copying and pasting text from the web into your paper, that's a big no-no. Definitely don't do that. So how do you avoid that? As you're doing your research, make notes on a separate sheet in your own words on these key ideas, and then use your notes to write your paper. That way, you'll have a step between your source and your paper, and that'll reduce the temptation to either deliberately or more likely accidentally plagiarize from your sources. Oh, uh, one more thing. There will be a draft workshop in class about a week before your papers are due, so you'll have a chance to see what your peers have written and to provide feedback and to get feedback um, so that you can get some uh, prior indication if there's been an issue with your research, if you missed something or you got something wrong, hopefully one of your classmates will flag that for you. Okay, so the space mission project, that's going to be happening towards the end of term, and that's going to be replacing a formal final exam. You're going to choose a mission from the space mission list that I've provided. It's just a Google spreadsheet. Um, the link is available in the project description, and I'm also going to embed the link into D2L. So you'll choose a mission. You'll write an outline answering the key questions summarized in the project description. Um, so briefly, there are six of those. It's what type of mission is this? Is it a lander, an orbiter, a rover? When did the mission launch? What were the mission's goals? What are the instruments on the mission and how do those instruments serve the goals? 
what, if any, results have come back from your mission. Um, so other than the James Webb Space Telescope, uh, which may or may not have results by the time you start presenting on it, um, everything else should have some kind of results. And then finally, what's the current status of the mission? This project will culminate in presentations that you'll give in class during the last two days of term. Um, so I will randomly assign presentation orders and presentation days. Um, so there's no rhyme or reason. I'll just draw names out of a digital hat. Um, so if you want to go first, cross your fingers, um, but everything really is completely random. Um, and then make sure that your outlines are in your own words. Your outlines will be evaluated for plagiarism using Turnitin, the same as your Lunar Science Project. Um, so do make sure that you're following good research practices, that you're writing your own words and not using the words from your sources as you're going through and producing these outlines. Uh, there will be some intermediate stages towards the completion of the space mission project. So there is a deadline for the mission selection um, to make sure that you don't put things off too long. There is a separate deadline for your outline. And then finally, a deadline for your presentation slides. So when you give your presentation, you'll be using either PowerPoint or PDF slides. And those slides will be due a couple days before the very first presentations so that I make sure that I have time to collect all of those slides and get them onto the classroom computer so we don't waste time on presentation days trying to download things and pull them off of flash drives or whatever. All of those intermediate due dates, including the draft date for your Lunar Science Project, are available on the syllabus. Um, they're in big, bold text outlined in red on the color-coded version of the syllabus, so you shouldn't really be able to miss them. I do accept late work, uh, though you'll have a really hard time giving a late presentation, um, so don't miss the deadline for your uh, space mission presentation. Um, so I'll, generally speaking, other than that, I'll be accepting late work up to one week after the established due date. So once a week has passed since the due date for, say, a homework assignment. I'll provide feedback as well as answers to that assignment, at which point I will no longer be accepting late work for that assignment. So once the answers are available, I'm not taking late work anymore. There is an exception to that, which I mentioned, which is the space mission presentation. If I don't have your slides at the time of your presentation, then too bad. While I do accept late work, I do apply a penalty. Uh, it's 10% per business day. Um, so if you get up to that one week deadline, you'll get 50% credit for that assignment. And then after that, um, it stops being submissible. If we get up to the end of the semester, say the last day of class, and you have a late homework assignment that had been due like the previous class, normally you'd have a week to turn that in. But once we get up to the end of the semester, because I have to calculate grades, I'm going to place a hard deadline for all late work on the last day of class. So if 5 p.m. on the last day of class comes and goes, and there's something that you haven't given me, I'm sorry, I'm not taking it. I have to calculate grades, and I don't have time to be reading through a lot of last-minute submissions. So do keep that in mind. Okay, now on to slightly more general policies that cross the college. Um, so first, CCA, along with all colleges and universities and institutions in the United States, has to conform to the Americans with Disabilities Act, which means that if you have a registered disability, that you're entitled to classroom accommodations based on your individualized needs. Um, so if you have a recognized disability that requires accommodations, particularly if it requires classroom accommodations, so you need me to do something differently than I otherwise might, 
please make sure that you talk to me about that as soon as possible so that I know what you need. And if something's not working, tell me that too, because I am not a specialist in uh, dealing with all forms of disabilities. And so if there's something that I'm doing that's not working for you, let me know and I'll try something different and hopefully we'll figure out some way to best suit your needs. Also regarding uh, classroom organization, please leave your phones away in the classroom. Um, we all have these wonderful uh, addictive distracting devices that they call cell phones. Um, try not to have your phone out during class. I know it can be really tempting, um, but it's going to be much easier for you to learn the material and to succeed in the class if you don't have your brain on your phone and if instead it's focused on the course material, whether that's on me or your lab partners or whoever. Um, so try to remain focused. I do allow tablets and laptop devices with the understanding that students oftentimes like to use those to take notes or to uh, keep track of course materials. Um, so as long as you're using those devices for classroom purposes, that's fine. Um, but cell phones, please leave those put away. Um, and do your best to remember to silence your devices. I know sometimes it's easy to forget. So if your phone goes off in the middle of class, it's not a big deal. Just try your best because the more often that happens, the more distracting it's going to be for you and for your classmates. I'm also required to implement CCA's academic integrity policy. Um, academic dishonesty in any form, whether that is cheating on an exam or plagiarism or assisting another student's violation, that's one that oftentimes gets forgotten. All of those things are forbidden by CCA and across the Community College of Colorado system. The penalties um, for those things can include academic sanctions like reduced or otherwise failing grades, up to and including disciplinary sanctions by the college, which can extend as far as expulsion. Um, I've never had a student expelled for any kind of academic dishonesty in my class. I hope never to do that. Um, so please don't put me in a position where that could happen. Um, I'm sure that none of you would ever participate in any kind of se severe academic integrity violation but it's important for me to give you this warning at the beginning so that we all know what's expected. The most common type of problem that I see by far um, is plagiarism, which is what happens if you take another person's words and present them as your own. Um, this can include their actual words or their ideas um, that are uncredited. Um, so plagiarism can take many forms, some more obvious than others. So if you copy and paste from source material, that's plagiarism. So is replacing a few words in someone else's sentence without attribution. Um, so if you paraphrase someone but keep the same idea and don't say where you got that idea, that is also plagiarism. Some contexts, like say an English paper or a long-term paper for like sociology or something, do require you to quote from sources properly attributed, but you should not be doing that in this class. Um, there's no reason in any of the written work that you'll submit to me that you should be quoting from a source that you found on the web, so don't do that. One way that this can show up is students using homework help sites. Um, so this is an example across the top of the slide here of plagiarism that has shown up in one of my previous courses. Um, I ask students to explain the events leading up to a core collapse supernova. Um, and this particular student didn't really know how to answer that question. Um, so he or she went hunting for the answer on the web and found text on a homework help site and then pasted that text into his or her answer to that question. Um, this is the sort of thing, If you, I'm not going to just read the text to you. If you want to pause the video and read it, that's fine. That's the sort of thing that will definitely get flagged in my brain uh, because it's more technical than what I'm talking about in class. 
it's written using formal language that's more appropriate for scholarly publication as to what I would compared to what I would expect a student to write. Um, so these are the types of things where I can look at that and based on my years of experience teaching go, this doesn't sound like a student wrote it. And nine times out of 10, when that happens and I try and hunt it down, I go, oh yeah, this is where this person found this and that's plagiarism. So first of all, don't do that. And second, one way to avoid doing that is to stay away from homework help sites. So do not use homework help sites for this course. Quora, Chegg, Course Hero, other similar sites um, whose names I'm not coming up with on the fly, stay away from those. First of all, you'll be tempted to do what this person did and copy and paste what seems like a good answer. Second, you might find an answer to a question that wasn't asked, so you might get a wrong answer off these homework help sites because they're not vetted. So just don't use them. Stay away from homework help sites, and that's going to be better for you and better for me and just better all around. If I find a violation of the academic integrity policy in any form, I have to report it. Once that happens, there's a whole process that we'll go through. Um, and we'll talk and I'll kind of see where you were and what you were thinking and we'll evaluate how to move forward based on individualized circumstances. Let's try to avoid that. So if it becomes necessary, I provide the details of CCA's policy, but if you exercise good judgment, stay away from copying and pasting from web sources and like don't cheat on an exam, which is easy not to do. Um, chances are it's not going to be an issue for you, but it's important to talk about this stuff in advance again. Um, so at a minimum, if I find that the violation was unintentional and incidental, I am going to require you to resubmit whatever it was that you did that caught my attention. Um, and the grade on that's going to be reduced. It's going to be reduced at least one letter grade, um, potentially more depending on the severity of the violation. That's the minimum. Depending on how things go, I might recommend more severe penalties, um, but those all depend on circumstances. So more severe penalties, either for more severe violations or for repeat offenders, include zeros for the assignment. I can recommend you fail the class. Um, and that's the most I can give you is a failing grade for the course. But there are also more severe penalties that it could be imposed by the college if there's a record of previous violations and depending on individual circumstances. And that can go as far as expulsion. It's unlikely, but that is the maximum possibility. So it can go quite severe under extreme circumstances. Again, I really hope this is not a problem. I don't particularly like having to talk about the academic integrity policy because um, I don't like having to invoke it, but that's one of those things that has to be clear up front. Thanks for your attention. I know this is kind of a long video, um, but it's important to have everything set out at the beginning. I'll remind you one more time that all of these policies are available in the written syllabus on the course D2L shell. So do go and have a look at those if there's anything I said today that you're not certain about or if you want additional information. And of course, also remember that you're free to ask me questions and I will be happy to clarify anything you're not sure about. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in class.